Welcome to Croft House. In this project, I made some tab-headed curtains for a 200-year-old cottage. The ceilings were quite low and the room was dark, but the tab style and the light reflective quality of the fabric added brightness and a touch of modernity to these rooms. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set the tabs to make these curtains and add a few other tips in curtain making along the way. Line your fabric on a roll to eliminate creasing and measure to make sure you've been sold enough. Not so important if you've got a short piece, but if you've got 27 meters or more, you need to know. And mark your meters on a piece of paper so that you know exactly that you've got enough and you don't forget. I used to have a wonderful meter wide table, which was so simple, but now I work 50 by 50 and just put a pin on the meters. Again, when you roll it back up, you can count your pins. It just makes life a little bit easier. Next, measure the length of the fabric that you want and use the edge of the fabric, the edge of the table. And I use a set square against the pin mark to make sure that I'm going to get a really level line across my fabric. I then place a meter rule against the edge of the set square, remove the pin, carefully place the two together, and then draw a line with chalk across the fabric. Once I've done that, I then take a second meter rule and using it as a slide rule, I place it carefully against the edge of the first ruler. I then slide the first ruler along to the edge of the fabric, remove the second ruler carefully and draw the line to the end of the fabric. With a plain fabric, you can always work on the back. I don't use a contrasting chalk because I don't want a heavy bright line across it. If you're working with a pattern you may need to work on the front of the fabric because patterns don't usually run at right angles with the edge of the uh, fabric and then you will need to follow the pattern especially if you're joining fabrics. Once you're happy with your line you can then just cut straight across that piece of fabric and continue with your next length. Let's just take a look at the lining. Um, I always use soulproof finished curtain lining. It's 100% cotton, it drapes really well, it is more crease resistant than some other lining fabrics, but more importantly, it is resistant or more resistant to sunlight than some other fabrics. So it fades less and has slightly longer life. I generally use the pearl. It's a lighter colour. Again, I feel it reflects the sun, but it depends on where I'm hanging the curtains and the colour of the curtain fabric. Um, occasionally, I will use the ivory, which is a slightly warmer colour. There are two ways to buy lining if you buy it wholesale. One is on a long roll and this is creased and lapped, and I prefer this because it's much more manoeuvrable. So measure and cut your lining in exactly the same way. I use the creased edge as my guideline. I generally allow eight centimeter uh, double hem turn on lining and another two to three centimeters for the turn down at the top, just to be sure. And I set my lining about three centimeters higher than the bottom edge of the curtain. So you can do your own maths on how you want your lining and curtain to sit together. I like my linings to sit two centimeters in from the edge of the curtain fabric. So that's four centimeters less than the width of your curtain fabric. And I allow a one centimetre seam allowance. 
that's on a single width of fabric. So if you've got a single width of fabric, you would double that. And if you're joining fabrics, then you're only going to take that from one edge because you're going to have a one another one centimeter seam allowance where your fabrics join. So again, that's a little bit of maths calculation for you. Quick tip, I'm right-handed and I've discovered more by luck than judgment that if I cut with the fabric that I want to use on the left of my scissors, I get this uneven edge, two uneven edges. If I cut with the fabric on the right of my scissors, the two layers of fabric are cut and match absolutely perfectly. The next step is to turn up the hem on the lining and you use your own dimensions, but I allow um, a double fold of eight centimeters. So I've got four, four, um, because of weight, I, I just feel it also gives it a slightly more luxurious look. Pinning is up to you. I like to put a few pins in because I can check that everything is in place. Um, I use extra long, really sturdy pins. These are pins that are not as sturdy and I use them more for dressmaking. They're a little bit thinner as well if you've got a finer fabric, but I do like these sturdy pins. The next step is to get the lining hem through the machine. This is my Faf Select 4.2. There are two placements uh, for the thread. Uh, the normal bobbin and then it has one here that you could put a larger cone on. Now I always used to use an industrial machine and my favourite machine I had for 21 years and when the chap came to buy it, it blew up. He didn't want to leave me. But anyway, I don't do as much commercial work now as I used to and this is my workhorse. It has all the buttons that I need. It has a walking foot that helps the fabric move more smoothly through the, the foot. Now you're ready to whiz away with your hem. And I like to line the edge of the foot against the top of the hem, just to keep everything straight and if you have a walking foot you can put that down and that makes sure everything's going to move at the same pace. And away we go. See how easy it is with the pins from the left. Um, you can really simply just flick them out. For the tabs, I have a 28mm pole and a 35mm pole. For the 28mm pole, I've cut the tabs 20 centimeter length, 12 width, and the 35 22 in length and 12 centimeter width. That means for the 28mm, the drop after removing the 1 centimeter seam allowance is either end will be about eight centimeters. That's about seven over the pole. And on the 35 mil, the drop will be 10 centimeters, about eight centimeters over the pole. Right sides together, I prefer to sew them all in one go. It saves time and it saves thread. You can sew the 28 mil and the 25 mil separately so you don't get them muddled up if you like. Um, and then the next thing that I do is turn them inside out. And I got this magic little tool and I really can't remember where. I think it was when I was living in Vietnam and it's so good just to nip onto the edge and turn everything inside out. Now we can work on the top fabric. I like to cut the selvages off. Sometimes the selvages are a little bit more gathered than the main fabric. And so once you've sewn your seams together, they can pull. The next step is to turn up the hem. I like my hems to be 15 centimeters, a pin all along, and then 
it will be doubled over and eventually we will mitre the corners, but we will take a look at that later. A vital stage in curtain making is pressing. And this is a good time because you've got all your components ready and you can just iron the lot. First, iron the bottom edge of your hem and then fold down and iron the middle. Don't be tempted to iron it on top because you can get a line and you can see that on the front of your fabric. Next is the tabs. Once you've turned them all inside out, put the seam into the middle, press on either side and you can press your lining now at the same time. With right sides together, pin your lining to your top fabric, set the lining about three centimeters up. This is just in case there's any sagging later on in the life of the curtain to stop your lining hanging under your top cloth. Smooth your lining across to the other side and you'll see the gap, which is the turning allowance for when you turn your lining and your curtain fabric the right way round. You can now pin and machine your edges together. Make sure that you machine above both hems. Um, and then once you've finished, you can run your fingernails along the seams. If there's any sort of little bits of gather, that does help to ease that out. You can now turn the curtain right sides out, set your sides so that you've got a couple of centimeters or whatever your seam allowance was, uh, smooth across to the middle, make sure that your hem is level, you can put a pin in the middle, this um, is quite important for when you get to the top of the curtain, um, yeah the non-creasy lining is a little bit creasy but that presses out really easily and just make sure they're even either side. We're now going to mitre the corners. So crease those edges really, really firmly. Mark the corner with a pin. You're then going to turn those creases over on top of each other so that they sit quite neatly inside each other. You can then turn your hem up and you can see that lovely crisp line on the bottom. You do the same with the side and so you've got a lovely sharp mitre. I put the lead button weights in next. Unless I've got a really heavy interlined curtain, I always put a weight in the bottom of the curtain. And a good place to put it is just inside the mitre. Um, you can either put it on the corner here and then it will fold down and it will sit on the lower edge. Or you can put it a little bit lower down in the corner. It's really up to you where you prefer. You can play around with the corner of your lining, your mitre. Um, if you want everything touching really perfectly. The lead weights, I set them at... Um, half curtain width intervals generally unless I've got a really heavy fabric but um half width is absolutely fine on a lighter weight fabric continue right to the end of the hem and fold everything down neatly as you did before and um set it ready for stitching To you whether you use a knot or a running stitch to attach the thread to the fabric. I join the mitre uh, with a running stitch and my, I do my hems with a kind of crossover stitch. So I take up a thread from the front of the fabric. I then go back over that stitch and make a stitch through the hem and then come back to pick up another thread on the front of the fabric. 
back across it and forwards. And then I just continue the whole length like that. And I'm stitching slightly under the hem. Loose stitches. So that when you turn it over, you you can't really see anything on the front. If you if you can see a row of stitching, then you've pulled it too tightly. Stitch the lining down over the mitre a little way along the bottom edge, and then start to measure for the length of the curtain. Smooth the lining across. Use, I use my measure to do it, and then measure up at intervals across the curtain to a meter. You can then move your ruler up to get the finished length that you need and fold down the top. Make sure the lining and the front of the fabric sit really tightly together when you fold them over and press them so you've got a nice sharp edge. Now turn the curtain inside out, make absolutely sure that sharp crease on the curtain fabric and the lining match exactly. Make sure the fold on the edge of the curtain is where you want it to be and pin it. We're then going to mark for the tabs. Now mark in the centre of where the tabs will be, one either end, one in the middle and then you've got four spaced out in between. You're now going to put a pin uh, in the centre of where each tab will sit. You may find that one side of your tab is narrower than the other. That's not a problem as long as the widest side sits uh, against the curtain fabric so that that's the bit that's going to be seen. You're not going to notice if it's a little bit narrower behind the pole. Okay, so then sit those in place with a centimetre or however much seam allowance you've allowed, just sitting this side of the fold. Okay, and so just get those all in line, make sure they're straight, and then pin everything together so that those folded seams are exactly together. Your pins are level, put a couple of pins in, and then you can just machine everything along the front seam of your fabric. You can now trim the edge. I've got too much lining here so I can cut that down to a more even level. Cut across the corner so that when you turn it the right way around you've got a nice sharp corner and then top stitch. I like to pin it so that the lining isn't going to roll up over the top of the curtain fabric and I do that quite close to the top of the curtain and that just gives it a nice crisp finish. I now give it a good press. I don't press the front of this fabric because it's textured and I don't want to lose the design. I then concertina it it's going to a customer so that it lays flat. Put it in a tube of polyurethane which has lasted me years because I can recycle it and there we have it. Nice, clean, tidy, ready to go to the customer. Thanks for watching. If you found this video useful and you'd like to see more tutorials on of furnishing and upholstery, please subscribe, hit the bell and I'll see you next time.